Well, the first thing that I'll be looking for will be looking for friends. And that's when friends start asking me about Bitcoin. I'll know that because in, you know, in a bear market, friends aren't going to be asking you. But in a bull market, when my friends start asking me, I'm going to be really happy to kind of explain to them and teach them. It's going to be that first light bulb moment going, okay, general interest is picking up. Now, the second factor I'm going to be looking for is when acquaintances or friends from five, ten years ago start getting in contact with me. Now, this is when I'm going to start going, okay, now this is really interesting. This is where people who don't really know me are reaching out to talk to me. And this is going to be kind of the second phase where I go, okay, it's really picking up now. So first was friends and family. Um, now it's acquaintances. Now, the third phase I'm going to be looking for is when major publications have Bitcoin sort of front page news, when Bitcoin hits new high on the front of CNN or Channel 7 in Australia or Sydney Morning Herald. This is when we can really start to see that it's picking up and people are starting to get tempted and people are seeing Bitcoin has increased by 100% in the last month and people start going, wow, look, this sounds like a great investment. I'm going to start really putting money in. Now, the last phase, which I believe most closely aligns to the top of a market, is when people start buying insane amounts of Bitcoin, like percentages of their net worth, and when people start buying on credit. Now, when people start buying on credit, it's a dead giveaway that they're suffering from FOMO, which is fear of missing out. Now, when people are buying with credit, they're not using any risk management. And the problem is, is that if it drops 30%, you have to find 30% of the credit loan that you've got somehow to pay that back to the lender of the loan. Whereas if it's your own money, you're down 30%, but at least you don't have to replace that 30% to someone else. So when I'm reading stories about people cashing out their houses to buy Bitcoin and people using credit, it just means that when these people are invested and the price comes down a little bit, 10, 20%, they're just going to get wrecked and they're going to want to sell. And all of those people who don't understand how to hold are going to sell and it's going to create more selling pressure. It's going to drive the market down. So those are my four sort of rules. So the first one is when family and friends start asking me about Bitcoin. The second one I'm going to start looking at is when um, acquaintances start getting in contact with me. Third, major publications during the bull run, not in a bear market, during the bull run. And the fourth thing that I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be really looking for stories about people investing, selling their house to buy Bitcoin and taking out credit. And that's when you're like getting to the top and you can either decide to start selling little bits of your portion or if you've decided to hold for a long time, like myself, um, you might think it could be a time to start hedging your portfolio and maybe start thinking about a short.